Hello everyone, and welcome to Toy Ninja VR! Yes, after some setbacks, Toy Ninja VR is back on the internet, and I hope that you will enjoy the experience. This demonstration is meant for developers who are interested in exploring virtual reality as a medium to tell stories in. Toy Ninja, a little bit of history here, was first worked on in, I think I started in May of this year, 2014, and it was right after I learned about the Oculus and finally decided to order the development kit in time for development kit number two to be shipped out to me in a timely manner, and now that we have Unity free support, I feel a lot more people will who may have ordered it, even if it's just been sitting on their desks, will definitely have no excuse not to explore. So, as I said, Toy Ninja is to explore uh, techniques to tell stories in virtual reality. Specifically, if you look down here, you'll see the Ninja, uh, which is the namesake of uh, Toy Ninja, is a third-person entity, and you can... hold on, let me... Adjust my headset here, reset the orientation. If you look down, you'll see the Toy Ninja is a third person game. And the first thought a lot of people have when they see the Oculus Rift and think about virtual reality is first, they think about first person experiences. Uh, let me just grab my controller off the ground here. Oh, and. Sorry, there's a mute button on the controller that I accidentally hit. As I was saying, most people are interested in first-person experiences, and while I think that this will eventually be a very compelling first-person uh, medium, I don't really see the input techniques nailed down yet to a point where I'm interested in it, and so I'm really here to explore third-person games, such as Toy Ninja here. Uh, let's talk now about what the ninja can do in this demo. As you can see up there, it says collect the black boxes. We collect the black box, and the geometry of the level changes, and this is how you navigate through the demo. As you can see, the ninja moves uh, towards, away, left, and right of you, and can jump. And if you hit a wall, you slide down the wall. And as you come back up here, you'll see that instead of sliding down the wall, you can also choose to jump even higher. Toy Ninja is inspired very much by uh, N, which is a game that I first played quite a, quite a few years ago. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite browser games, although now I believe some cons uh, console version of it has released. So this is influenced very heavily by N. If you go to one of the links in the description will be to the uh, 2D alpha of this game, which features a hundred levels of 2D platforming. So if you're interested in trying that out, certainly you have the option available there. So the, that covers the physical abilities of the ninja here. Now let's get into the interesting design stuff. One of the first interesting design choices was figuring out when you say left, right, forward, or away, wh how does that map into the ninja's movement? And I've written an article about this on my website. There's a blog that you can go read if you're interested in more information. But essentially, if I hold left in this demonstration, the ninja will travel left and he will continue going in a straight line and then once he stops moving completely, that movement axis will reset. And now if I hit right, I will go right relative to where the observer is. And I found through trial and error that this was the best technique I could come up with. Uh, I'm interested if you uh, are experimenting with third person input, uh, I'd be very interested in alternative techniques. Uh, but this was the one that I felt uh, seemed the most intuitive to the player. Uh, well, the player being me, <laughs> of course. Um, so that covers uh, 
movement, I should mention also when you first turn on Play Ninja, uh, you'll receive a splash screen, and there are actually three different uh, movement configurations set up uh, by default. One is WASD centric, if that's your thing. Uh, second one is arrow key centric, still on the keyboard, and another is uh, game controller uh, capability. I'm using the controller because I find it much more comfortable when playing a virtual reality game to not have your hands tied down onto the flat surface. When you have the controller, it allows you... Uh, I, I, I feel it, it affords me better uh, immersion because you don't have to constantly keep your hands in the same position. You can sort of move it around. Uh, so that covers movement mapping. Now let's talk about a few of the practices that I've established here uh, in this game at least. The first is you'll notice that uh, the camera is tied to this chair. You cannot move out of this chair as the camera. You are tied to one spot. And I found through playing a bunch of demos that any alternative, any motion uh, relative to uh, pressing a button and having that map into motion made me feel sick. So that's another one of the reasons why I explored uh, third person in this, although it does allow us to sort of stand up a bit and get a better view here. And this is also going to lead to my second uh, practice in a moment. Uh, and that is that we have this handy dandy, if we press one of the uh, buttons, it'll toggle this highlight above the ninja. And I find that this is very, very important uh, for two reasons. One, if the ninja goes somewhere that you can't really see, then you can press that button and you immediately know, thanks to the grace of the pink god in the sky, exactly where the ninja is. And uh, another uh, nice thing about that is if you are, as we'll see in some later levels here, uh, not sure exactly where you are, as you have to jump from one platform to another, you can use this depth guide to help uh, to help you navigate and so let's just get through a few of these levels to a point that demonstrates that here we go here's one example of this uh, actually let me briefly now let's let's do this first so as you can see here you jump in this level from one of these platforms to another but also, as you just saw there, this level is actually designed specifically to bring out this issue. If you, uh, as you, as you go left and make this jump, you don't necessarily know exactly where you'll end up. But if you use the depth guide here, I feel it gives you a much. Oh, I feel it gives you a much better guide as you get further along here. The the jumps become more and more difficult. There we go. To make, if there were some shadows under these blocks and you could map up the shadows to the pink beam of light here, uh, I feel that that would definitely give you enough of a guide to be able to make it through this level. And actually, let me move around here to see. Uh, that's moved back, so I'm going to have to move sort of forward as I make this jump. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> good thing I had that depth guide there, or else I would have no idea how far I was from the edge. Uh, let me see, what else do I have written down here? Depth marker, movement of ninja. Ah, yes, the last thing that I wanted to emphasize here for this type of game is it's very easy to place things in such a way that it can obscure your character. Uh, if, as you can see, uh, as you go through the levels that I've made here, it's very easy, first of all, to see where your character is thanks to the pink god in the sky. 
And secondly, they're, the levels are all designed in such a way that if you get behind part of the level, you can get out very easily by just going in uh, really most directions. I tried to uh, I tried to have that feature. So that is definitely something as you make levels for a third person game such as this, you definitely want to have that in mind. The, the fact that you don't want the character to become stuck behind excuse me, parts of the environment. Uh, and with that, I think I'm going to pull, oop, I think I'm going to pull this video to, well, okay, after I get this black box, I'm going to pull this video to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope that it helped you, it helped inform your design decisions as a developer. And I will see you in the development community. Thank you once again for watching this video, and I hope you have a good day.